people, they sound like something is booming. Boom! Then the house was shaking. By the time I went out, there was a big uh, bamboo tree like this one. It was moving like a small, a small tree. If you are even sitting on chair, the chair is shaking. Almost the house like somebody is just bulldozing it. And it will hear a very big bang from this direction. And you could see the earth moving towards the eastern direction. Malawi is located in southeastern Africa and is surrounded by Mozambique, Zambia, and Tanzania. It covers an area of over 118,000 square kilometers with a population of 14 million. Lilongwe, the capital, has an estimated population of about 1 million. Between December 6 and 20, 2009, the Koronga district in northern Malawi was struck by numerous earthquakes. This earthquake sequence terrified the local population. The Karanga earthquakes are associated with active faulting on the west flank of the East African Rift. A rift zone is a region of the Earth's crust that is slowly stretching apart, like the Red Sea. As a result of the earthquake sequence in Malawi, an earthquake disaster assistance team was organized by the U.S. Geological Survey and sent to the affected region in January 2010. The purpose of the cooperation between the USGS and the Geological Survey Department of Malawi was to assess the causes of the December 2009 earthquake sequence and to better prepare the country for future earthquakes. We are uh, today together with the our American colleagues uh, were in the, in the Karonga area where uh, a series of earthquakes have been happening since the 6th of December 2009. What we are, the mission today is to actually try and uh, make sense out of what uh, has happened. We know there have been uh, a lot of earthquakes, 32 earthquakes over 4.3 magnitude on the Richter scale. So we I uh, uh, invited our uh, colleagues from the United States, George Wasave and the others, to work with us because we, we realized that the issue at hand was quite complicated and we needed our international colleagues to, to, to assist us. And therefore, this is what we're doing today. We are moving around the affected area, uh, taking measurements uh, of, of the, the damage that has happened, assessing the, uh, the damage, and also trying to see how best to, to, to help you know, the country, what sort of messages should we be passing to the country so that the final decision makers can make informed decisions. Earthquake safety in Malawi and in other countries is largely an engineering issue. The strong ground shaking during an earthquake can severely damage fragile buildings. If the ground shaking is strong enough, it can cause buildings to completely collapse, often killing the people inside them. We were interested to see what were the consequences of the shaking. And we found that uh, it was mostly structures of masonry that didn't have sufficient engineering quality, you know, sufficient precautions taken, such as concrete frame, and other engineering considerations. The engineered buildings in the Karanga region survived very well. For example, the hospital at Karanga had a few broken window panes, but no real structural damage. The fact that the, the, the hospital itself survived without any real structural damage um, is again a good sign. Uh, the National Construction Industry Council uh, is developing a loading code that, among other things, take into account earthquakes in the country. And uh, uh, we are using the information that was developed before by uh, uh, the Geological Survey, and uh, uh, we're interested to capture in that code what has happened in Karonga. Actually, we are sitting in the uh, what is called the East African Rift Valley, 
and we have been disseminating this information that we have got some uh, natural structures like the forts. So what we have in this area that we are experiencing, we think we are experiencing what is natural to the area. At the same time, we are giving information to the population to say if they experience some cracking, they have to report to the DC. Otherwise, right, right now, they are sleeping outside their homes because they are heavily cracked. An earthquake is usually followed by aftershocks that may cause even more damage to already weakened buildings, bridges, and roads. Unfortunately, it's not possible to predict the time, place, or size of an earthquake. For this reason, community preparedness is the key. The damage caused by an earthquake is usually widespread. The amount of damage depends on the strength of the earthquake and its epicentral location. The magnitude 6.2 Koranga earthquake of December 20, 2009 was the last and strongest of the sequence and it caused four casualties and significant damage to 2,000 houses and other structures. This earthquake occurred early in the morning. Had the earthquake struck later in the day when schools were in session, the number of casualties would have been much higher. Single-family residences and other structures suffered heavy damage or complete collapse. The heavy damage can in part be attributed to the fact that Malawi has no seismic building code. During our visit, we provided training to local leaders regarding earthquake preparedness. With community education and better building practices, the losses of human life and property during future earthquakes can be greatly reduced.